26 year old Pakistani woman sentenced to death for blasphemy. On January 18th, 26 year old female uh, Anika Atik uh, was sentenced to 20 years of imprisonment and a fine of um, roughly a little bit over a thousand dollars USD, as well as death by hanging by a cybercrime court in Ra 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 Walpindi, Pakistan. Mohammed Hasnat uh, Farooq reported to the Federal Investigation Agency, or FIA, that Anika had shared blasphemous illustrations with him. Anika denied all charges and stated that she is a practicing Muslim. According to her, Farooq is framing her as a blasphemer because she refused to, quote unquote, be friendly with him. Anika insisted that the plaintiff tricked her into a discussion about religion so that he could gather evidence against her. The documents presented to the court showed that her WhatsApp profile picture was an image or cartoon of the Prophet Muhammad. She allegedly shared, quote unquote, offensive YouTube links with the plaintiff. The U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom, or USRIF, reports that Pakistan, quote, leads the world in blasphemy prisoners and is and estimates that there are 80 alleged blasphemers in prison with half sentenced to death. Wait, so he tricked her into sharing stuff with her and then so her her intro. story is mm -hmm. that she refused to be friendly with him. I'm not exactly sure what that means, either just to be nice or I think that might be a way of saying she refused his advances. And um, because of that, she is saying that he was motivated to basically entrap her to use their conversations to draw out a discussion of religion from her and then therefore gather evidence against her with the intention of then going to go turn her in as a blasphemer. And that's what happened. This is so scary. You know, her even nation, that's her side of the story, right? All right. I was speaking. Sorry. Yeah. Um, this is like, you know, the atheist and, Imagine being like an atheist in Pakistan or a secular activist in Pakistan, right? And not knowing that at any time that one of your friends also, you know, if one of your friends could get their heart broken or if they're interested in you and you ignore them, all the stuff they have on you, all the discussions that you have had with each other could be used against you. You know, they could, if they decided that they just want to ruin their, your life, they could just easily just share one of the screenshots like this is like you have you have basically you have a you could have a sex slave basically if you just if somebody sends you a picture of muhammad if if you're a guy and it, there's a girl and you're like acting like oh religion is stupid and stuff like and then so, one day you decide to just whatsapp them a joke about muhammad or something then like oh hey you're my sex slave now <laughs> i have I, I i could ruin your life with this you know like here i'm just not don't, don't even screenshot it video video record it so that people can say if, if photoshop or something we're like yeah i own you now <laughs> like what a nightmare oh my god the but yeah that's you, basically you... what kiki is saying kiki is saying this is exactly why blasphemy laws are deadly they can also be used by perverts to have their way with women the depravity of blasphemy laws knows no bounds i wouldn't say that this is the primary thing that happens but this is the idea or issue of blasphemy law being used in pakistan to settle personal scores is well known and it's a huge problem because it's so often this accusation is so often used as a way to settle personal scores. I've even seen people argue that, oh, well, this isn't actually like about Islam after all. Like this doesn't demonstrate an issue with Islam. This is like a, this is a personal issue that's just misused. And that itself drives me crazy. Um, so I just saw in the, in fact, let me um, send you this link in the private chat. We should share this. I like just saw that um, Hara Sultan posted this photo about a campaign for her. So if you could share oh. what I just put in the private chat, that'd be awesome. Um, 
And uh, so he, I guess, or maybe other people have um, started a hashtag called Free Anika. Um, that is spelled A-N-E-E-Q-A. Or Save Anika, excuse me. Um, so I would, I just found out about this. So I'd encourage other people to join in if it's safe for you and speak out of, again, about, out against this. And then also, um, let me put it in the live chat. There is a petition, um, on her behalf. Um, so if it's called, um, Supreme Court of Pakistan, or just save uh, Anika. Um, so I think, guys, I would encourage people to sign this and share it if there's something that um, you care about. Um, I'm sorry, I think you were trying to highlight something and I interrupted you. No, that's okay. I also want to, by the way, thank you, Harris, for doing this. Um, I want to share with you guys to show you how ridiculous things are getting in Pakistan. Is this Pakistan? Yes, it is. Um, no, okay. So we so we have examples of people just throwing out a piece of paper, not knowing that Muhammad was written on it, and get they get got in trouble just because throwing out a paper like they don't they, they didn't were even illiterate. know Muhammad. Hmm? Those the, that case, those people were illiterate, and they were still right. prosecuted. It's crazy. All right, can I give you? I don't. I, I showed you this, and I don't know if you saw it. Uh, but here's another example of how ridiculous things are getting, right? Um, this is a... Okay, it says, this is... Uh, they were threatening this... In Pakistan, apparently, he th this man was threat threatening a truck driver, and they were threatening to burn the truck because they found this beverage, I think it's a Sprite, right? And in the sprite, the sprite, the QR code, how much? This, the QR code of the sprite looks like it has Muhammad written on it, right? Hold on, let me, sh let me hold on. Yeah, they can, yeah, Pepsi or 7-Up or Dio, man. Okay, this is 7-Up. Okay, actually, you, you can see right there, you see? You see the QR code? <laughs> Unmute yourself. Wait. What? So this is this is a QR code on Seven Up, right? So uh -huh. this part of the QR code looks like it says Muhammad right here. It does. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so Rajesh is laughing. <laughs> yeah. So now, <laughs> secular, I think no way. So now they were because of this one Seven Up bottle in this guy's truck in this truck driver. They they attacking the truck driver and they're threatening to burn down his truck apparently because of this part of the QR code, <laughs> which looks like it says Muhammad. <laughs> oh my god! All right, that's this is, so crazy. Yeah. Wait, was it? But they were threatening to burn down his truck. That's so stupid. Like he doesn't control what's go goes on these oh, i'm sorry i actually start saying these things as if people think about them and then i hear yes. myself and i'm like susanna they didn't they don't think <laughs> about it like <laughs> so just shut shut up girl they don't think <laughs> like <laughs> i i think what you need is uh, for safety reasons there needs to be an app right um that could just detect anything that might look like muhammad and you just need to constantly scan everything in your life just to make sure you get rid of anything that could potentially. By the way, but I mean, you can't even get rid of it. What would you do with this? Like, if you throw it away, now you're like disrespecting Muhammad. Do you know what I mean? Oh my God, so you... it's such a trap. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I think you could. Add... Hey, I have an idea for India on how to attack Pakistan without any. And casualties okay just write in biodegradable papers right because i don't want this to be like a pollution thing okay um just i don't want to say bomb because people might get the wrong impression just take like warplanes and just throw machete paper 
um, all over Pakistan with small little Muhammad's written everywhere. What is machete paper? No, did I say machete paper? What did I say? Paper mache. That's what you meant. Paper mache. I think. Okay, I don't know what that. I'm like, ma machetes <laughs> are weapons. <laughs> <laughs> you Sorry. said this was peaceful. <laughs> <laughs> paper what? Paper what? What are you? What are they called? Paper mache. Mache is it? I don't know. It's spelled, <laughs> I think, uh, M A C H E. Oh, I thought it was mache. <laughs> Like, wait, pause. Like, what? Yeah, yeah, this is peaceful. No, guys, YouTube. I was. That's that's just. I didn't know what the, what they were called. Okay, I was. I'm. I'm. I swear, I wasn't. <laughs> I wasn't. <laughs> I wasn't advocating for violence. Jesus Christ, we're gonna get a strike. Uh, <laughs> so were, okay, so you you want a flyer a flyer dropping campaign, but yes. what would the flyer dropping campaign do? No, 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 not flyer. It would be small pieces of paper, so it would be so hard to get rid of, right? So then it would be all over the floor and everywhere, right? And people can't even walk properly, right? Because it, they can't like step Muhammad, little Muhammad's are going to be oh. everywhere, right? And you can't clean the streets, right? You can't do anything because you're going to be like cleaning Muhammad's everywhere, right? And what are the things called that you like? What are those things like uh, for parties, like colorful little, little pieces of paper come? Oh, uh, confetti. confetti. Confetti poppers. Yes. Yes. You could just be like, make Muhammad versions of them as a, as a weapon, <laughs> right? And you just like, poop, Muhammad, like Muhammad in your face, you know, Muhammad everywhere, right? Like, yeah, Indian soldiers just need to have like, uh, what is it called again? Um, yeah. Confetti. confetti. Yeah. Co Confetti paper. Instead of bringing web, um, like guns or something, they should just have that, right? You know, just uh, the, the, you could invade Pakistan overnight like that. Just like <laughs> throw that everywhere. Oh, and pr like put Muhammad on your clothes as armor for Indian soldiers. Just write Muhammad on you. You might everywhere. be onto something. My, my fear Ooh. is that they would whip out the nukes on whichever country organized such a campaign. For that going India, to that India just put respect. just put Muhammad everywhere in India. That would be the <laughs> you know. And if if the, if the Muslims want to do the same thing, that would, would be very difficult because the Muslims to defend themselves for India, they have to have cows, right? Imagine like how that's very heavy, right? Like imagine um, Pakistani oh. soldier. Pakistani soldiers have to have like a little bit be cow carrying around their back just to defend themselves but the indian but the indian soldiers they just need to be able to ride muhammad like this is they have an advantage <laughs> it reminds me of when um they would use a trebuchet to throw cows like over castle walls they did? like that's what they could do yeah what would you do what would the indian army do try to catch them mid-air so that they're safe maybe i don't know <laughs> that should be a movie that should be a movie where pakistan is like throwing cows into india and then india is like all the scientists and the military generals they come up with this technology and they these planes that have a net in the middle and they just catch the cows midair and they save them <laughs> i think what was different in the medieval times is i believe that they they would throw like dead animals though to spread disease over the walls, the castle walls. Okay, they catch them and they cure them. They take them to cow hospitals. <laughs> I actually, I think there are cow hospitals in India. Oh yeah, you're right, you're right. I right. remember uh, Katie telling me about how there's like, <laughs> like all this money, there's more m money dedicated to like this these cow welfare agencies than um, like maternal health. Don't don't quote mm -hmm. me on that. I can't remember exactly. Oh, here's an idea. One last idea. Okay, cow vigilantes in India. Okay, if you want to save the cows, right? Just go ride Muhammad on them. Like, yeah, there we go. Just go ride Muhammad on every cow. Imagine like this becoming a thing, and then you can't tell the difference because Hindutva has like they have Muhammad written everywhere. They're having flags and clothing with Muhammad. And we're like, wait, are you Muslims? Or are you Hindus? <laughs> like, no, this is, we don't like Muhammad. This is just a defense tactic. <laughs> <laughs> That's what would be confusing. 
I'm like, oh, what? You're a Muslim? Like, no, I'm not a Muslim. I'm not a Muslim. How dare you? Like, but you have Muhammad written all over your clothes. Like, we're just trying to protect ourselves, okay? <laughs> oh, my God. Mm -hmm. um, um, moral of the story, guys, is that the situation in Pakistan is very severe with the blasphemy uh, issues and um something i care about a lot so please uh sign this that petition that i posted in the chat earlier um i'll post it again and um i need to investigate uh this little campaign that i just spotted with horace um but also hashtag free anika um it's so crazy yeah. to think about like she's my age like yeah. to have her life like upended like that like over something so little over something i do on a nearly daily basis you know it disturbs me i mean she wasn't even trying to be an activist or anything like that she didn't even sign up for it like some people are like oh don't take your risk uh, um she like this is the consequences of taking risk like this and she wasn't even signing up for taking risk like this she was just having a private conversation with someone and i ha can't tell you how many people have reached like young young atheists have reached out to me in pakistan and they're like i'm losing my mind because like and it's highlighted well one the situation with the lynching that happened with a uh, pragantha kamara was really bad and i got a lot of people reaching out to me because of that but then this situation they're like you know think about the paranoia that you have to live with if you have any criticism or something you don't like about islam in pakistan and maybe you're talking to someone who you think you can trust and if that relationship goes south this could happen to you yeah especially if you're a girl because you know men could get very very you know i mean actually technically women too but it, um, they could get very vengeful if you're like even if they're an atheist you know, if you break someone's heart or if they were hoping something would happen and if it doesn't, you know, you don't know how people will react. Like, they don't even have to be, like, you don't even, you, it's not like, you, it's not just Muslims that you have to be afraid of. You have created an environment that e even people who are not Muslim or at least even not radical Muslims, you know, if they get upset enough, they could just use the system as a way to attack you. Yeah. Um, Oh, here's another solution. Here's another solution. Just in one day, everybody accuse everybody else of blasphemy in Pakistan. Everybody accuse everybody of not in one day. No, no, no. Just hear me out. Okay. You can't get rid of everybody in Pakistan. And then every accusation of blasphemy would be. Yeah, see, Rudrish agrees with me. Okay. Just do like a secret Santa, uh, secret Santa blasphemy, like just like a random, everybody, everybody pick two person, every Pakistani randomly pick two other Pakistani and accuse them of blasphemy in one day. No, that could backfire. It's just safety of numbers situation, right? If safety of numbers. And the, the whole every accu no accusation of blasphemy could be taken seriously ever again after that. There's like, going to you know, be a lot of individual harm that does happen okay. to people. Yeah. Okay. So just to be clear, Susanna, I'm not being serious. So. I know. Okay. I know. Okay. All right. All right. But I think you. Yes. Exactly. It's a pyramid scheme blasphemy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you have to pass it on, right? So. <laughs> I, when you accuse of some, when you accuse somebody as blasphemy, they have to now go and find five other people to accuse of blasphemy, and then they each one of them have to go out accuse five. In, in no in in no time, in very in a very short amount of time, all of Bla all of Pakistan will get covered, right? And then we'll see what you're gonna do. There we go. Hindu you know, Susana. this is the one time I agree with Hindu for Susanna. <laughs> right. the only time is thing don't do it guys don't do don't. that seriously though mm. don't do that it's not safe yeah oh well, yeah i wasn't you don't do it anyways atheist republic needs your help we've been the target of many legal attacks by hindu nationalists ever since our founder armin Abhabi blasphemed against hindu deities we have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in india 
We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.